Welcome back to the channel. My name is James Gagliardi and today I have something special here. This is a 2015 Audi A3, but it's not your average A3. This one is extremely modified. And here today to talk to you about it with me is my friend here, Brett. So Brett, tell the viewers a little bit about what you've done to this car, because it's pretty crazy. So we put a lot of performance work into this. We've made it customizable only to give it a little bit more of a showy look to it. But underneath the hood is 100% modified. So we have a bigger turbo, we have water meth, and that's just a couple things that really make this car move a little bit better than when it was stock. So why don't we talk about where this car started off from and talk about kind of its journey. So you got this car back in 2015. He originally told me he leased it. And uh, you know, what made you want to mod this car? What was your first mod? What started you off? So I don't like to have anything stock. So while I was leasing this car, I really started to get really bored of it. And I first didn't like the subwoofer of how low quality it was. So my first mod while I was leasing it was I took the sawzall to the rear deck. It was a sunny, 90 degree day outside, and I cut the subwoofer right out of the car. And at that point, I realized that I'm going to keep the car and just start modding it. Yeah, I mean, you know, once you break it, you buy it, I guess. That's right. But he broke it in a very good way. It's a lot of fun. So Brett, what would you say your favorite mod is and why? I think my favorite mod would have to be upgrading the IS-20 turbocharger to the IS-38 turbocharger. It was a huge increase in power and we were able to get a lot more horsepower and torque just by doing that one mod. And the other supporting mod that I think really helped out the turbocharger was adding in water meth injection because that's keeping the charge cool in itself and you're also allowing the tuner to give you more timing so you can gain more horsepower and torque and my current tuner has it set up where we're not going to blow the engine if anything ever happens to the water meth. So it's only tuned for the benefits of water meth, not being reliant on water meth. That's smart. Mm -hmm. So you're playing it safe, but you still got a crap load of power. So of course. in the end, it doesn't, you know, he's still making out pretty good. Could he push it farther? It sounds like it. Yes. And he will be, but it's good to know that he's still playing it safe. I mean, you could do all these mods and still have something that's reliable and daily drivable. I mean, you want to touch upon the reliability of all this real quick? Of course. It's 76,000 miles right now, and I'm still going strong. I did, did a compression test, and all cylinders are completely fine. And what's amazing about this platform is that it comes forged from the factory. And so it's a completely stock upper, stock lower, stock trans, and stock drivetrain. So all of this platform can handle that much horsepower. That's actually, that's really impressive. Stock transmission, stock everything, stock engine mounts? Uh, so not stock engine mounts, oh. we upgraded to the uh, MSS kit. I mean the, uh, the Super Pro kit, not the MSS kit. The MSS were the springs. The Super Pro was the engine and transmission mount, which really allowed the engine to put that power down to the ground. Without just flexing. Correct, yep. Took a lot of the softness out and it, it feels more stiff and it feels more responsive when you touch the gas. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. So, if you had to advise the up and coming new modern, what to do, I mean, what, where, what do you advise them to do starting off? You have an Audi A3, you're worried about where to go, uh, what would you recommend them to look for in a tuning shop? Because not everybody here lives in our area, so, you know, what do you look for? Of course. So it's always good to do your research. There's plenty of tuners out there. I can go five minutes down the road and find a tuner. My tuner right now is actually remote tuning my car from Dominican Republic. So Frank Mabo from Mabo Tech currently has world records for the MQB platform. So you need to look at who's your tuner. You need to figure out what they're doing, what they recommend, and look at other people who have used that platform. So not only does Frank come out with amazing software for this platform, but he also has hardware. So he has a new turbocharger, the Mavotech turbocharger. He has the bi cooler. He's releasing so much different stuff for the MQB platform because he knows it so well. So it's important to always look for someone who understands the platform and doesn't just say, let's put a bigger turbo on it and just send it because that's how you start breaking things. 
Yeah, and that's what you don't want to do. That, I mean, if there's something to be said about this whole package put together is it works. And that's, that, that's, that's important to really look at here because a lot of people, like you're saying, will just throw a turbo on it, throw this on it, and not throw all the necessary modifications you need around that turbo to handle it. And they'll start breaking parts and become discouraged. He went about it a very good way. Right, and it's not, it's not all about the horsepower number either. Just because Frank Mabo has records and he has insane horsepower for what he can develop, you have to look at reliability as well. So I first went to Frank and he didn't put a lot of power into my car and he said, you're heat soaking, you need to do something more. So I actually switched tuners. I went to a different tuner who promised me the world and promised me that we can get you 29 PSI and we can get you cracks and bangs and pops for your car and make it sound really good. And I came to find out from Frank that that is actually damaging my car. So I went about it the right way a second time and I put water meth in, I took the front crash bar off, we did a whole tubular crash bar for the front to let more air in through the front. And I went back to Frank and he gave me the horsepower that I wanted. I was trying to aim for at least 400 wheel and now I'm at 426 and I'm happy about that. Yeah, so I mean overall, what I take away from that is you initially saw an easier way out, which a lot of you will, but you didn't take it because you knew that there was, you know, it was, eventually it was going to come and bite you in the ass. Of course. I mean, it's important to really take into consideration all the extra steps, again, that you need to take to make these things reliable and so you don't just start breaking parts left and right. Right. And a lot of people don't want to go water meth only because you read a lot of horror stories. So water meth you need to maintain, which is a fact. Uh, methanol is actually very corrosive to aluminum and it, it requires maintenance like everything else. And if you have a tuner who tunes your car that's dependent on meth, if the meth doesn't fire while it's trying to make a lot of power, you ruin the whole engine. So you need to find a tuner who's tuning the car for the benefits of water meth but not making it reliant on water meth. One of the things that I really liked about his car and that I feel like gave it a uh, modified character was the wheels. So tell us a little bit about the wheels that you picked. Sure, so I always feel that a good set of rims you need to get to complement the car. So we were looking for a little bit of a tire, taller rim and a little bit of a taller tire to fill in that wheel well a little bit more. So we put the stock OEM rims with winter tires for my winter set and we bought a set of Rotiform 19 by 8 and a halfs with Mitchell and Pilot Sport 4S to be able to hook the car as soon as I go from a launch and be able to stop the car when I'm stopping from 130 miles an hour. Yeah, remember, you, you add all these mods, you add all this power that it was never originally supposed to have, you have to add the rubber to match it. And he certainly has done that with this setup. I'm gonna include a link below with all the mods that he had. So if you're looking to mod your A3, like Brett has here, you can see exactly what he used and in the order. So now that we've covered a few of the cool things about the car, let's hop in and take it for a spin. What do you say? Sounds great. All right. my first driving impressions of this car. Acceleration wise, it seems like it, it 
doesn't have much turbo lag with his setup. It's very nice. I notice it's dialed in around maybe 20% throttle response. Oh, I like those downshifts. 20%, you really start to get into it. So it's kind of like 20% on half. It doesn't like moderate acceleration. It seems like it kind of likes more uh, uh, either all in or 75%. What would you say? I'd say the car is dialed in where it really likes balls to the wall. Um, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be able to go moderate, then have to take it out of sport mode and put it in drive and then just let it bog out for a little bit and then it becomes more of a normal driving experience yeah i mean i love how this holds the gears unfortunately this year audi a3 for whatever reason didn't include power paddle shifters which he is very disappointed about i am I, but it does have a very good transmission and uh i did this have the dual clutch it does have a dual clutch yes so this does have a dual clutch transmission, so the shifting is very nice. It's a nice responsive transmission, it holds the gear as well. Um, now for the tune, did it modify the uh, the uh, gear mapping? Yes, so I have a Eurodyne DSG Stage 3 tune for the DSG, and I have a custom ECU tune to match the DSG file. So both the transmission and the engine computer are matched in terms of responsiveness, power shifting, and everything in between. Nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, overall I like it. You know, coming from driving my car, which has around the same amount of power as he started off with, he's, his had 220 to start off, mine has 241, so not, not a huge difference there. Uh, getting back into my car was a little depressing at first, I'm not gonna lie. I miss having a high horsepower car. I mean, this thing's just, this thing's very fast for what it is. It's hard to get that to translate, you know, over on camera in video. It's really hard to translate how quick this car really is. Um, I mean, if you put it in sport mode, it's crazy. But if you wanted to just be chill, you just bump down on the transmission knob and it's normal, you know, it's it's not as obnoxious when you really can't be obnoxious, but most of the time you want to be obnoxious, let's just of be course. honest. Oh, yes. That's the whole reason you, 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 know, you spend all the money on mods, to be obnoxious. Right. It'll always keep it a couple gears lower than drive. Oh, yes. <laughs> Get into it, so it's it's ready for you to just mash the throttle and go full on. In drive mode, it's like oh, you want to be quiet and, and try to keep a normal pace with regular traffic, then you keep it in drive. But then you can go into sixth gear, then bump it down to the second gear from drive. So yeah. But in, in sport, it's already in third, and it'll usually stay in third if you mash it, or it'll go down to second. So it reduces how many gears it has to drop down to just launch it. Yeah, it's it's. it's, 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 it's very responsive for what it is. I'm not even missing having paddle shifters. I have paddle shifters in my car, but this thing really stays in the gear you want it to be in. It would just be nice to have it for you. Oh, of course. If you're talking about down the road, messing around with that. Right, it'd be nice to have a nice steering wheel with, um, you can program in the paddle shifters because it's a whole unit. You have to put in all the electronics and then go into the computer. I mean, this is just making me giggle listening to these downshifts right now. I mean, they're, they're really great. I mean, I'm going to roll down the window just a little bit and let you take a listen to this. Off in the same boat, you know. Exactly. We both leased our vehicles, so we both leased it. We both started off in the same car, like, on a horsepower. 
I just don't know if the, I just don't think that uh, my motor would be able to take this kind of power because mine's a cast block, it's right. not a forged block, and that 9 speed, I don't know. And we can gain a little bit of power and, and see what it makes and you never know. max out what you have and, and then once you get tired of not making enough, then we just keep making more of a different block. watching the video we'll see you next video please be sure to like and subscribe as I'm a new channel and I'm really trying to grow here to provide you all with some nice awesome content thank you for watching like and subscribe yeah